Okay, in today's video, as you can see, we're going to be going over a problem involving mass defect and binding energy. We're going to figure out the amount of energy released during nuclear fission of uranium-235. And this is what our problem says. It says, in a nuclear fission reaction, uranium-235 can be split into krypton-92 and barium-141. And we want to use the mass in atomic mass units, AMUs, to determine the energy released from one of those reactions and also the total energy in joules released from one gram of uranium-235. So we have uranium-235. We know if we add a neutron to that, we get uranium-236, and that will be unstable and will split into one possible pair of products, which would be barium-141 and krypton-92. And from that, we also get three neutrons. All right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do this in atomic mass units. And I made a previous video, which you linked to in the upper right-hand corner here, where we started off with uh, average binding energy per nucleon. But we're going to be using atomic mass units. And basically, we have a conservation of mass problem here. We're going to figure out the mass on the left, the mass on the right, and take the difference of those. And that'll be our mass defect, which will convert into binding energy. So what you do is you simply go to the internet or a table or somewhere and look up, or maybe they're giving to you the mass in atomic mass units of uranium-235. Barium-141, Krypton-92, and the neutron. Okay, these values are all in atomic mass units, and they're carried out to six decimal places after, six places after the decimal, because the binding energy and the mass defect is going to be kind of small, so we have to use these exact values. And what we're going to do in the next slide is we're just going to add them up. On the left-hand side, we have uranium-235 and a neutron, so we just add up the atomic mass units or the masses and atomic mass units for the uranium and the neutron, and we get that the total mass on the left-hand side is 236.052593 atomic mass units. We're going to do the same thing for the right for the right hand side. We have a barium, we have a krypton, we have three neutrons. So this is the value 3n is three times the value from the previous slide for the atomic mass units of the neutron. We add those up, and you'll see that the atomic mass, the total mass on the right-hand side is 235.866559. Now you'll notice the mass on the left is less than, excuse me, is more than the mass on the right. That means we have a mass defect. We're missing some mass, and how much mass are we missing? We're just going to subtract those two values, and we get that the mass defect is simply 0 0.186053 atomic mass units. That is the mass defect. Okay? That's the missing mass. Well, where did that mass go? That mass went into energy. So let's figure out how much binding energy we get from that fission of uranium-235. So this is the mass. And we're going to use Einstein's equation equals mc squared to figure out the energy. E is for energy. M is for mass, C is for the speed of light. We're going to use this equation to get the energy, but this mass has to be in kilograms, and this mass is in atomic mass units. So first we have to convert from atomic mass units into kilograms, and we know that one atomic mass unit is 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. That tells us that our mass defect in kilograms is 3.0 times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms. Now we can just plug that value into here with the speed of light. And that tells us that the energy released from one of those reactions, one fission, the fission of one atom of uranium-235 is 2.78 times 10 to the minus 11 joules. That's the energy in joules. Now, when we talk about binding energy, the values are usually given in electron volts. So we're just going to convert, again, now this energy in joules to energy in electron volts. We know that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. This value divided by this value, joules cancel. We're left with electron volts, and we're left with 173 mega electron volts. That's 173 times 10 to the 6 electron volts. So that is the energy the answer to the first part of our question, the energy released from one reaction, one fission reaction of uranium-235. Now, we're also asked to find out how much energy is released from one gram. So we know that this is the energy from one reaction. Well, we want to know one gram. That means we have to know how many reactions are going to occur, how many atoms of uranium-235, how many nuclei of uranium-235 are than one gram. So first, we're going to take one gram. We're going to convert it into the number of atoms, all right? 
So we're just going to take another conversion, one gram of uranium-235. We know that one, gram, one mole of uranium-235 has a mass of 235 grams. So we're going to take this divide, times 1 divided by 235, and we get that that is equal to 4.26 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. That's the number of moles. That's not the number of particles. But we can convert that into the number of particles because that's the number of moles. And we know that 1 mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles, Avogadro's number. So we have, we started off with one gram, we convert it to moles, now we're going to convert to particles, and we know if we have one gram of uranium-235, then that is going to be 2.56 times 10 to the minus 21 atoms, okay? And now we can convert, or now we just multiply those two values together because we know this is the energy from one reaction, we have this many atoms in one gram, if all of those undergo fission, we just take the number of atoms from one atom, we get 173 times 10 to the 6 electron volt. This is mega electron volts. I converted into electron volts. Mega is 10 to the 6th. And that tells we have 4.43 times 10 to the 29 electron volts. Okay? Now we wanted to know joules. So we're going to convert that, another unit conversion, electron volts is energy, joules is also energy. We know 1 electron volts is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, and that gives us 7.09 times 10 to the 10th joules. Now, is that a lot of joules? I don't know, that seems like a lot, but let's, I'd like to think of it as a little bit more in mass, like how much mass did we lose from that 1 gram? So now I think a good thing to do is let's figure out how much mass we lost from that energy. So here's the energy in electron volts. From one reaction, here's the total number of energy in joules. We can take this joules and convert it into mass, because this is the energy that came out. Well, how much mass was that? We're going to use Einstein's equation again. We're going to change it for mass. We're going to take the energy, which is the total energy from one gram, divide by the speed of light squared, and you see that that's 7, excuse me, 7.88 times 10 to the minus seven kilogram. Now that's not very much change in math. That's pretty small, but even that's a little hard to imagine and a little hard to kind of compare because our starting mass was in grams and this is in kilograms. Well, let's convert that kilograms into grams. And you can see that when we react one gram of uranium-235, the change in the mass, okay, is only 0 .00, 0 0.000788 grams. Okay, so when one gram of uranium-235 undergoes fission, the change in the mass is only that amount of grams, which is 7 times 10 to the minus 4 grams, not very much. Okay, so there you go. We did everything we wanted to do. We figured out the amount of energy released from one reaction, one fission of uranium-235, and then we figured out the total amount of energy and the change in the mass from one gram of uranium-235. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.